All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is great to be here at MGM National Harbor as we prepare for, we have a big night of action tonight, but let's look forward to about a month and a half from now, May 11th at the Eagle Bank Arena here in Fairfax, Virginia. In this area, we have a big night of action, a unified Super Welchweight Championship showdown featuring from this area, Swift Jared Hearn defending his championships against Julian J. Rock Williams. Before we introduce the fighters, I want to acknowledge the esteemed trainers, the trainer for Julian J. Rock Williams, that being Stephen Bradman Edwards, who has done a phenomenal job with J. Rock from the very beginning. He knows boxing, he loves boxing, he does a tremendous job. Let's have a round of applause for Stephen Bradman Edwards, if we can. Also, we have the co-trainer of uh, Swift Jared Hurd, Andre Robin, who also does a stellar job, and both camps are tremendous. We'll have a round of applause for Mr. Robin as well, as we have two trainers. We're acknowledging both sides as well. But Saturday, May 11th, is going to be one of those fights that you look at and you know you're going to get action. You know you're going to get a high-level prize fight. Uh, there is a saying that there are levels to this game in boxing, and lo and behold, this is such a high level with two tremendous fighters who are competing at the world-class level. The man I'm getting ready to introduce has a record of 28 wins, one loss, one draw from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's great to be here on the East Coast because when I think about a Philadelphia fighter, when I think about a guy who embodies that old-school nature, will fight anybody and everybody, this guy wants it and has done it. He went after a world title the first time, was unsuccessful, but since that time period has rattled off four straight victories and has looked tremendous in every single outing since that stumble. Um, it's about the, the journey and also the destination, and he certainly is going to be going after a world title for the second time. He's in shape, he's ready to go, and he brings it every single time out. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from the city of brotherly love, here is Julian J. Rock Williams. How's everybody doing? Um, I want to thank everybody for coming out and supporting the fight on May 11th. Um, I'm looking forward to a, a really exciting fight. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a really, he's a really good fighter, a good, strong fighter. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, a, good, a good crowd at uh was it Fairfax or something like that and uh I'm excited man I'm really I'm excited it's a really good fight it's a fight I wanted and uh I'm looking forward to winning on May 11th and making my dreams come true so uh that's it really I only got nothing else to say thank you Round of applause for Julian J. Rock Williams. And uh, what I will tell you, and just by being around Julian for years and years and years, he's already laser focused. I almost feel like it's fight week, and we're still six weeks out until Saturday, May 11th. That'll be PBC on Fox with Jared Hurd defending his championships against Julian J. Rock Williams. Now let's bring up a man who is from this area. Echo Keek, Maryland is his home. Hasn't fought here in the D.C. area since November of 2014. So this is significant for him because it is a homecoming fight. He's 23-0, 16 knockouts. And when I will tell you about this man to my right, and I remember when he burst onto the scene in November of 2015, he fought Frank Galarza on the main event of a card, and he was the underdog coming into that fight. People were... You know, praising Galarza and who is this young guy, you know, who's, who's a sapo, who has very good skill. And he didn't surprise me, but he certainly burst onto the scene and surprised the odds makers. And since that time, he's just been on a tremendous run. Last year, he was a part of the fight of the year against Edeslandi Lada in Las Vegas. Just to go to show you what he needed to do in that fight, he was down in the fight in the 12th round. And he needed a knockdown. And he got it. All of that while dealing with adversity after that fight. He had left shoulder surgery. Comes back on one of the biggest nights of the year when Deontay Wilder was fighting Tyson Fury. And stops a very tough English fighter in Jason Wellborn. Now 
He's back here taking on a hungry contender in Julian Williams, but this is the first time that he's defending his championships here at home. This is a very big moment for him, and the one thing that I know about Swift Jared Hurd, he always rises to the occasion. And it is going to be special to see these two gladiators who come from tremendous cities collide on Saturday, May 11th. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the super welterweight champion of the world from Acokeek, Maryland, the undefeated Swift Jared Hurd. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank God, you know, um, for being here. Thank you for everyone that's coming out. Um, thank you for Fox for um, putting together a wonderful uh, event. And uh, I'm happy to be back home. You know, I don't have many of these guys are doing a wonderful God, job with me. Everything I asked of them, you know, they uh, they made it happen. And um, we, we kind of knew about this fight with Julia Williams for a while now. And I know these guys are, are, are intelligent fighters. They've been watching. They um, um, That what makes it an even more dangerous fight because when you study your opponents, the way that uh, I also do, it doesn't rely on to skill. It doesn't rely on who's faster, who has the most power. It's a thinking man's game. And I know they're coming in there with a game plan which makes this fight even more dangerous. And, um, you know, me, I'm, I'm a guy that, that every day when I'm running miles and miles on the treadmill, I'm studying my opponent too. So this is going to be a great fight. This is going to be something that the guys must tune into. Everyone knows a Swift Jared Hurd fight is always going to be electrifying. It's always going to be toe-to-toe -to -toe action, and I'm definitely going to bring it. I'm so excited for fighting back at home. Um, you know, like he said, Gray said it was back in 2014 since I fought here back at home. First fight as a world champion. I can't wait to put on a wonderful show for you guys. And uh, make sure you tune in May 11th because it's definitely going to be a storm coming. Swift, Jared, her ladies and gentlemen, the champion. I'm going to ask a few questions to both guys as they prepare for their showdown on Saturday, May 11th. It is PBC on Fox, promoted by TGB Promotions. Again, we'll be at the Eagle Bank Arena in nearby Fairfax, Virginia. Going to be a tremendous night of action for you, Julian, as you prepare to take on Jared Hurd. Not many guys are lining up to fight this guy, but... When it comes to opposition, I don't think I've ever heard any story about you saying no or you saying, you know, give me a week, whatever. It's like anytime they call you, when and where. Tell us about fighting this man in his home area. Well, it's simple. You know, uh, he's the consensus number one dream away in the world, and I want to fight the best. So to be the best, you got to beat the best. And wherever we, wherever we go, as long as I get in the ring and I ain't got to fight, the whole D.C., Maryland, J. area, <laughs> then I'm good. You know what I mean? I'm fighting Jared Hurd that night. I ain't fighting this coach. You know, I'm not fighting the crowd. I'm fighting Jared Hurd, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Does this, when you know that Jared Hurd has a, a fan-friendly style, comes forward, loves to stand and trade, you like to bite down on your mouthpiece, you like it when guys come at you, you come at guys, does that excite you even more as to be like, okay, I'm not going to have to chase this guy and find him around the ring because he's going to want to come forward and walk me down as much as I'm trying to do the same to him? No, nah, that's, that, that's having a preconceived notion on the kind of fight he's going to fight. I don't know what he's going to do. He might come in and fight off his back foot. He might come and try to walk me down. I don't know what he's going to do. I'm prepared for everything. So that's pretty much it. Now, your first time at a world title did not go according to plan. What did you learn in that? Because we have seen you on a tear over the past year and a half to two years. Um, I just learned to just be patient, be a little more patient, you know. Uh, taking the loss and have to get in the back of the bus and come back. It took some patience. It took me uh, uh, maturing up some, some, you know what I mean? And uh, I did it, and I'm here. And a lot of people can't do it, you know what I mean? Uh, boxing got a way of when a, when a guy lose a fight, they got a way of, like, pushing him out. And like shutting them from the sport and can and, like condemn the fight if I haven't won loss, and I wouldn't let boxing do that to me, so I'm back and I'm here. Did that upset you when look there are very few guys who are undefeated in the history of boxing, but that one loss, despite what you'd accomplished in your career, 
Did that agitate you? Did that sharpen that edge even more so for you, or did you not pay attention to that? Uh, I think a little bit of both. You know, I didn't pay attention to the critics. You know, I mean, of course, it bothered me that I lost. And uh, but losing, losing, and winning is not just a part of boxing; it's a part of life. You know, what I mean, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And uh, I just took it in stride, got up and dust myself off, and I'm back. We look forward to seeing you back on May 11th, Julian Williams. For you, Jared, you're coming home. You're coming home. It has been quite some time since you fought here in this area, and you have gold around your waist. When you step and make that ring walk on Saturday, May 11th, PBC on Fox, have you thought about how special that moment will be for you and your family? Uh, most definitely, man. I, it's something that I always thought about in my entire career, you know, I didn't have big term goals coming up because I was an outstanding amateur and I just set small goals for myself and you know along the, the way I be on just to fight on local cars and become a, a a main event here and then you know eventually become a main event in, in other states and then eventually I fought for the world title and now that I am champion one of my small goals I wanted to always do is uh, defend my titles here at home and now I'm getting the opportunity to do it. Can you give us your initial preview of Julian Williams because both you and him come from very, you know, solid backgrounds and, and we're both from the East Coast, both have very strong work ethics, but what are you expecting out of Julian Williams on Saturday, May 11th? Uh, Julian Williams is a very crafty fighter also. He, he, he's from Philly and he has that um, Philly craftiness, all kind of like Bernard Hopkins. You know, uh, he likes to punch and, and clinch. You know, not, not let his opponent get his shots off. And even when he's in the inside working, you know, he has the, the, head, the head movement that, um, you know, kind of call it head control, where the fighter swings shoulder to shoulder and try to, try to control their opponent. And he has little tricks that guards are high. He'll pull your guard down and, and, and land a shot. Little veteran tricks that, um, you know, that, that, that crafty fighters do. He doesn't go out there and just let his hands go. He's actually thinking in the ring. Now, you have an unblemished record. We're going to go back, not to your last fight, but the previous one that you were a part of, the 2018 Fight of the Year with you and Edison Landi Lada. What did you take away? How much of a confidence booster was that for you, knowing that you were down in the cards, you got the knockdown, and that solidified the victory to help you unify one half of the super welterweight division? Well, um, during the fight, I didn't think I was down on the cards. I went to my corner and my head trainer Ernesto told me that uh you know you you are the unified champion just get out this round but it was something to me the fighter I am that said man just go out there and close the show and uh even though I felt like I was up it's, it's just not in me to, to to survive for for the last round I wanted to put on a good fight for the fans so I went out there and closed the show I'm glad I did because it got me to win I didn't think the car was the closest it would but I'm happy I went out there and did that all right, now we're going to go to Julian Williams to get final predictions. And as we get set for Saturday, May 11th, it is PBC on Fox. Julian Williams, Saturday, May 11th, what is the result going to be? I'm predicting I'm going to win in the Classic. Probably going to have to do it a second time. It's going to be so good. Julian Williams predicting a victory in a Classic. Jared Hurd, your prediction for Saturday, May 11th with PBC on Fox? Uh, victorious, a decisive win. I'm not saying I'll go out here and get a stoppage or a knockout, but I will win a fight where it's, it's convincingly that it went my way. It is going to be a showdown at 154 pounds. Jared Hurd, Julian Williams, now we are going to pose the fighters and make sure, thank you to the media for coming early to tonight's event. We look forward to seeing you on Saturday, May 11th. Jared Hurd, Julian J. Rock Williams, the Super Welterweight Championship of the World are on the line. Supremacy on the line in that matchup. Thank you.